We're massive. Huge. Huge. Like, I'm actually like a C-list celebrity now. Like, my name was mentioned in People. Like I can't believe that. Mm-hmm. People magazine. People digital though. Yeah. It oh was it? It wasn't there's is there still a print? Yeah, there's people print. People don't read that though. My people mom. reading people? <laughs> people reading people who need people. People who need people. Um yeah, that's always sort of my like discerning like did it did we really make it if yeah. they were willing to spend the money on ink? Yeah, totally. Yeah. But how quickly do you think you can flip a people magazine? Like there's something about a newspaper, the black and white of it all the quick printing press but i feel like people such like a vast magazine you can't just like flip it topically tomorrow it's like a we- weekly it's a weekly magazine really yeah it's wow. cuz it's 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 an elevated oh god i don't want to get myself into trouble here <laughs> no, but like yeah, i was going to call it an elevated tabloid which it's not but it's it's wonderfully, it's an easy read. By the way, who's going to get you in trouble for saying that people is an elevated tabloid? People themselves. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like the, the level of fear of cancellation. I don't know if I should say this. People is an elevated tabloid. <laughs> I'm a cisgender white man. I'm walking a tightrope at every turn. God damn it. But yeah, uh, in case people don't know, uh, Hillary Duff. How could you not know, though? The, the news heard around the world. And it's just like, that could have been Jeanette McCurdy. Like, yeah, how annoyed is she? She's like, you know, like, I could have had, like, double the fucking book sales yeah. if I didn't make the, these gorgeous men cancel our podcast. Because we were equally as wonderful to her. That said, Hillary gave us the performance of a lifetime. She really just, she was unbelievable. So sweet. There's no one like Hillary. No. She's one in a million. And what I will say now to our friend Jeanette McCurdy, I'm going to look right in the camera, right down the barrel. <laughs> Jeanette, we've had our warm up. Hillary, not that you're our warm up, but we're ready. Okay. So when you want to come and do a make good with us, which you owe us, we're, let's, the seat is warm, the drinks are cold, and the, the goss is hot. Yes. Let's do it. Hot goss. <laughs> hot goss. We're bringing her in. But loving, respectful goss. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Empowering what, what, goss. What other kind of goss is there? The, the respectful goss, goss I like. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, I think that we deserve it. I think that people deserve it. I think, Jeanette, it's time. Enough, Jeanette. Bring... Let's get back to Hill. Yeah, totally. HD. It was HD. That's it what was it was. HD. It was amazing. It was just so wonderful. And I actually noticed, did you see that she just did an ad for Oatly? Oat <laughs> In Oat Milk <laughs> Company? Yes. <laughs> The comments below are literally like, but weren't we just talking about cow's milk? <laughs> <laughs> we actively made her disparage oat milk. Yeah. No, but she, you know, she's, this is part of what makes her so amazing. Like, even as she's talking about cow's milk, she probably knew that she had the oat milk ad. She never dissed oat milk. No. She, she's a lover of all things milk. Yes. Real milk, maybe fake milk. That's just my opinion, fake milk. And uh, the comments below were saying the exact, same thing that no she was never disparaging oat milk she's a fan of both cow and oat milk she's all milk inclusive really quick rate your rate these milks in order Mm -hmm. almond cashew oat i think i go oat i've never had cashew oat one huh I've never had cashew. I just don't like almond milk because I found out how it's made. You know how it's made? Tell me. They take a bunch of almonds and they put it, let's say it's we're making a small batch of almond milk. Mm. We're not making mass. Small batch. Yeah, and take ad a hoc, one spring one water off. bottle. Drink half the half the bottle, right? Or sorry, mountain water because mm. we're at Dear Media. Mm. Drink half a bottle of mountain water. Put 10 almonds in the mountain water. Let them sit for six months. No. And the it's skin, the skin, of course it's aged. No. The skin, the skin comes off and creates, it's really almond skin juice. But you can make fresh nut milks. My mother-in-law makes a fresh nut milk. How does she make her fresh nut milk? I mean, there's a similar soaking involved, but it's a day. It's not like. Fine. I exaggerated with the amount of months. <laughs> it's quite the exaggeration. By the way, maybe we get into aged nut milk. You know how they have like aged whiskey? Like oh 12 God. year? Like we have the most expensive 12 year almond milk. It's like a cheese. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. No, but that's how you do it. It's still almond skin milk. No? I you know, listen, I don't, I don't want to come for almond milk. I, I actually am a fan of almond milk, but if you haven't tried cashew. I haven't. Like, 
And you know I'm getting old when, for me, cashew milk is like a treat. It's like a reward. It's Is it thick? It's luxurious. It's thick. It's sweet. Really? It's gorgeous. It's a nice ride. But calorically dense, mm. thus, can't do it every day. It's crazy. Mm. Mm. crazy. So it's like the heavy cream of the fake nut world. Is that what it is? It's lovely. It's akin to macadamia nut milk. Interesting. I've also never had that. Also a fun ride. And you feel like you're in Hawaii. Wow. wow. Yeah. I just feel like LA will turn anything that's not milk into milk. Yeah. You have a lot of alternatives to milk. I've had plenty of New Jersey relatives come over and us go get a coffee and them ask for half and half and the hipster barista look at them like they just committed a hate crime. Half and half is fantastic. Tell just me. cream. You just put in a drop. Just a drop to change the color. It's a touch. Yeah, a touch. Yeah. A kiss. Have you seen almond creamer? I have. Explain to me what that is besides sugar. It's the same as a, 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 I love a nice almond milk coffee mate creamer. It's just like French vanilla. But my wife, the vegan, and I can both enjoy it. We don't have to get two separate creamers. Mm. And it's a nice time. Yeah. Or a ride. Mm. Tell me, where were you when the virality of our Hillary Duff episode really hit? When did, I want to know what you were doing when it was brought to your attention that we were I don't famous. Rem- I don't remember what I was doing, but I can tell you that it was my wife keeping us very abreast. She was. To our climbing numbers. <laughs> our queen, Claudia. She just like, every couple of hours, she just like send like, Another hundred million views, because <laughs> like, that's what we get. Uh, but she was she was fantastic, just letting us know that YouTube's popping off. For those of you that don't know, I mean, if if you're watching this, then you'd know and you'd see this. But Josh is now posting our full Good Guys episodes on YouTube. Yes, and so the YouTube video popped off, the podcast episode popped off. But where was I? Probably just slinging spritz on the streets, yes. checking my phone. And just so, so excited that we were finally getting the viewership that we deserved and that the people that need to see good guys saw it with our Queen Hillary Duff. Where were you when we became incredibly famous? I was just sitting in a chair refreshing my TikTok at every turn, every five minutes. Your TikTok blew the fuck up. It was a good clip. And uh, shout out Ben C, our editor, for putting it together so quickly. Yes, Ben C. Beautiful skills. But uh, you know what I feel? I feel like we're grown-up podcasters. We're coming into our own. We are. This is our, yeah, this is our moment. And granted, this episode, which doesn't have Hillary Duff, it's going to tank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Comparatively, it can't do as well. No, it can't. Not even close. No, it can't. But over time, like the stock market, hopefully we go up. Yeah, I'd hope that new people came to Hillary Duff, listened to it, because people were saying, I mean, I'm sure you read your YouTube comments. I'm sure you read every single one. Uh, yes. And- <laughs> <laughs> Just looking for the negativity. Ah. There's too much positivity. <laughs> Where's the negativity? Yes, um, I look. And people were saying it was just like the greatest podcast they've ever listened to. <laughs> <It's-> <laughs> and I was like, oh, excuse me. And it surely wasn't, but it was the Hillary <laughs> effect. <laughs> It was Hillary. It's like it was the Hillary it, effect. I'm jealous. Yeah. A, I'm jealous at like people fawning over her beauty, which she is stunning. Stunning. But could there be one comment about you and I? No, just but, one. There was probably one about you, <laughs> negative about me. Never. <laughs> Zippo. I, I wanted one to be like, you know, Josh looks all right too. Yeah, yeah. You do. You look. You look more than all right. You're Thanks, looking baby. great today. No, you're looking Go great. Mets. <laughs> Go Mets. And you know what? The lighting in this studio is so um, yeah. abrasive yeah. that I've started to wear a build cap just to save my under eye bags. It's good. No, it looks good. Thanks, good. baby. It looks good. So yeah, episode incredibly famous. Great. Feeling great. Great. And yeah, hopefully the people that came to listen to Hillary, listen to all of our other episodes because there's some some real gems in the archives if you go back to day one and listen through. There's some good stuff in there. Someone brought up that they're like, you should make this like a series of you interviewing, you guys interviewing child stars. And I was like, sounds awful. But (laughs) (laughs) but other than obviously Jeanette McCurdy, who owes us, and Miranda Cosgrove, my good friend who I love, who I would love to have on the pod. Is there anyone else from that era? Or is that like... Well, Chris, well, well, Christy Carlson Romano was up in your comment section. <laughs> was she? <laughs> What's CCR talking about? <laughs> she just commented, so I know she's down. And like, I feel like we could get Jamie Lynn Spears, or we could JLS get, would be big. Yeah, I mean, she follows us. I'm sure she follows you too on Instagram. Like, really? Yeah, I could. 
We could shoot her a DM. We could get like her nerdy brother. What's his name on the show? <laughs> What's that kid's name on TikTok? I don't want to be mean. I you know, know what I'm talking about. I know. I know that he, he pops in up your on craw. TikTok. A bit. I know you have a vendetta against I, him. It's just. It's a lot. It's a lot. Fair, fair. But it's fine. We won't mention him by name. Probably. I'm won't sure get he's to him. lovely. But he, I'm sure he's lovely, or he's not. But I think Look. he's lovely. Uh, I think that it shouldn't be a series. Like I think that like. We should just have, I like the idea of having some more child star guests maybe, but I feel like it could also turn sad very quickly. Well, the ultimate ones, which we won't be able to get, are, you know, DL, Demi Lovato, SG. Please, Selena. Selena, Selena, if you ever need to come here and tell your side of the story, her and Haley. All that drama. Have you seen this drama? No. Oh, there's just like, I don't. Download me, download me. I don't like know enough. But I'm pretty sure I'm gonna butcher this. Oh, can't believe I even brought it up. Kylie Jenner and Haley Bieber, I believe, were making fun of Selena Gomez's eyebrows on TikTok. Monsters. Monsters. And that turned into World War Three. People are picking sides. Celebrities are unfollowing <laughs> Selena Gomez. Really? Or people celebrities are unfollowing Haley Bieber. And it's just like the known thing is this is Selena is the the queen in this battle. And that's no, sh- I think Haley Bieber's fantastic. I think Kylie Jenner's fantastic. But in this specific situation, people are really going towards <laughs> Selena Gomez, it would seem. And uh, I think it's fantastic that we have to say that all three of these people are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so scared. I know. I'm, I'm so scared. I'm terrified. There's such powerful women, all of them. And it's and like. And not that they're not powerful, but their armies are so powerful. Yeah, they're all amazing. They're the, my favorite people to ever like. It's Every, like literally Harriet Tubman, Kylie Jenner. Literally everyone that we're talking about is amazing, except for Jamie Lynn Spears' younger brother on Zoe 101. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia Earhart, <laughs> Selena Gomez. Yeah, it's like she's they're they're right there. Like Selena's here, Haley's here, H- Haley's here, Kylie's here. They're all the same. That said, I think Selena Gomez. That's the drama here. That like her fans are. Fighting back because they love Selena's eyebrows. Marshall, is that the is that, that the whole? Was good. That was pretty yeah. good, right? And, Something and about what, the eyebrows, and it wasn't even like a direct hit. Mm. Like they were like uh, implying that it was. They were making fun of eyebrows, and Selena Gomez had just commented on eyebrows. And now, if you like go on TikTok, if you're in this like Selena Haley feud side of TikTok, which yeah, somehow I landed in, I don't know how. Uh, it's they're now like making videos like Selena Gomez made a penne alla vodka recipe. Haley Bieber made a penne alla vodka recipe. Well, that's just because penne vodka is fucking delish. I agree. I think that these are just simply coincidences. But people are, are starting to say that Haley Bieber's been copying everything that Selena Gomez does and has done for I, quite some time. I, I apologize for not taking a better look at Selena Gomez's eyebrows. But are they normal? Are they more manicured? Are they more fluffy? I, I think that they look fairly normal to mm. me. Just I, standard brow. I never looked at her and thought, oh, you have interesting eyebrows. I never thought about it. Yeah, personally. Enough. But also, I'm bad with that. Like, if she were to change her eyebrows, maybe I would have noticed. Yes. And I'm not going to outrightly like, I'm not looking at you. Well, now I am. You have good eyebrows. They're not bad. We yeah, both yeah. do. Yeah, Very do. Ashkenazi, yeah, Jewishy. They're, yeah, they're good. Groucho Marx. What yeah. if your beautiful queen of a wife, Claudia, gets her hair done, let's just say. Yes. Something specific done, some beauty routine. Will you notice? Uh, most of the time, yes. She always tricks me, though. She'll, And I don't know why I always fall for this. Well, she's After, maniacal. Unbelievably. Yes. I'm happy that you've seen it. She's a Svengali. After every single haircut, she will call me and she'll like, have part of her hair like tucked away and say, I got a bob. And it's like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. I know that you didn't, but she just like gaslights and gaslights and gaslights. And I'm like, oh my God, my wife got a bob. I can't. Yes. Because look, I'm sorry. I just, I I like a long haired woman. She has gorgeous hair. Don't cut it to here. Don't look like, you know, like Edna Mode from The Incredibles with that like short haircut. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think so. This like short haircut. No. No, mm. I can't have that. And I she love always tricks me. I love a power cut in a woman. Oof. Do you? Nice sharp I'm tell, lines. I'm gonna tell Paige to shave her head. She's done. She's gone short before. Shortish, like shoulder length. Loved it. What about bald? Great. 
Okay. <laughs> yes, all of it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm such a fan of the gender, but like Robin Wright Penn in a, I'm sorry, excuse me, Robin Wright in House of Cards, she's got like this striking, very short cut, and I just am like infatuated with it. When certain women, certain women are born for that cut. Certain complete, people in general are born for specific cuts. Completely agreed. Yes. Like when my hair is too short, I look just. Terrible. What do you look like? Terrible. My really? my head progressively gets eggier and eggier <laughs> the shorter my hair gets. So I keep it nice and long on the top. You'll notice I have a bit of a swoosh over to the side. It's not a full comb over, but it's an over comb. What do you call a What do you call a comb over? A when, part. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for some like insane word. Yeah, I guess I part my hair. Yeah, you part your hair. Yeah, and I, part I, and, I and I cover my uh, what would be an eggy your head. Look, look, I'll show you. You see, you see. There's like <laughs> you <laughs> see, see it, it now, right? Until you pointed it you out. You see it now. A little bit. Yeah, but see, no, you won't ever see it. Yeah, it's, now it's gorge. It's tough to wear. I speaking of, and this brings up some guilt that my wife and I both have. My beautiful son Max, and and we know he's beautiful. Beautiful. At six months years old. He, we were alerted by his pediatrician that she was like, you know, he might need to get one of these helmets. Have you seen the kids with the helmets? Yeah, I have. So now there's a bit, basically it was born out of the fact that we realized in the last 20 years, the kids are safest when they're sleeping at under a year old on their back. Mm. Used to be probably you and I were on our stomach because our parents didn't care about mm-hmm. us. Of course. But it's best for them on their back. It's more safe for their, their breathing. But kids were getting pretty flat heads. And then there are a bunch of other skull Mm. issues that can arise in a kid. Mm. Because as you'll know, when you're a parent, there's three parts to the skull when you're a baby and they're not connected. And as the year goes on, once they hit their one year birthday, the skull fuses. Mm. It's usually by two. And then your skull is what it will be for life. Mm. So you can intervene if there's some issues. She says, kid might have an issue. We go, so gorgeous this kid. No issue. She goes, bring him in. Go to the place. So you go into the place, and let's just say 100%, thank God technology like this exists so you can intervene. You put a soft little helmet on your kid's head 23 hours a day, mind you. Mm. They walk around in it for six months to a year. It slowly adjusts their head into the proper dimensions, and then it's, it's all good. But of course, like anything good, it can become a racket. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. We go in. He's laser measured. They're like, he definitely needs it. We put it on him. We pay for this thing. Now. How much is it? Thousands. Yeah, right. But thank God bless. We we, we have good coverage. Oh, right. this is a, an insurance. Yes. Understood. But it's still, there's a copay of three, four hundred dollars. Like, yeah. it's, it's not mm-hmm. cheap. No. And so, basically... We try to put it on him. We know many kids who were completely unaffected by it. He cannot stand this thing. Sobbing for days. Mm. Like, does not, they're like, don't worry, he'll get used to it. He hates it. Mm. By the way, have you ever worn a tight fitting hat for long periods of time and notice you get, you get a headache and you get a little hot? It's not, I I couldn't do it. Yeah. (laughs) You should, he's my son. This boy is schwitzing, he's (laughs) sobbing. You can't tell where the sweat stops and the tears begin. And this thing, first of all, it's rank. It smells. <laughs> <laughs> like the inside of a hockey glove. You it's know, like awful. The, yeah. And so, and they're just not, they were not being supportive of my wife being like, he hates this. Can we, yeah. is there anything we can do? They're like, no, tough it out. So finally, we're just like, he's, we're not, he's not wearing it. Okay. We bring him back in. They go, we just remeasured. It's really working. This helmet's incredible. This technology, we go, babe, in our head, hasn't worn it for six days. Totally. You're liars. That's insane. Then we go downstairs, and the security guard happens to just say to us, say to us, you know how many kids I see come up here with helmets a day? About 200. There's 200 kids getting helmets, three, four grand a pop, getting helmets every single day. There's like, There's not a kid who comes up here who doesn't get a helmet. It's like if you get audited, right? They're going to find something, right? Totally. They're not going to waste their time. No. We take the helmet off. We tell him it's enough. He's perfect. Turns out now at four years old, he's not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> His head is a little lopsided in the back. 
He's perfect. He is perfect. He won't notice, but it's a long-winded way of saying, much like your issue with your sight egg- egginess, from the back, he looks sort of like a, like a book that's been mostly read. Yeah, and that'll make him who he is. He lo- it looks like an inclined plane. <laughs> <laughs> You're making it sound terrible. It looks I'm like sure Tony would, Hawk can, I'm sure, can, <laughs> sure can, even can ride him like a half pipe. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> No, he's perfect. He's uh, perfect. There are two things. The first is, of course, he had to take it off. He's the kid's crying. It's terrible, miserable. Theo has a cone on his head for one minute because your he's dog, itching. Theo. Yeah, not that I'm comparing my dog to your son. Please, no, no, no. I just want. To I take sure. it off. Claudia will yell at me. She's like, "You have to leave it on him. He needs it." No, he's upset. He's uncomfortable. I'd much rather the long term repercussions for the short term making him feel better. Yeah. The second thing is. All of a sudden, humans need helmets. We've been around, we've spoken about this. Come on. Just saying that Western medicine came to save the day. People's heads are fine. People's <laughs> heads are fine. I don't know. Like, I, you don't look back at all these pictures and everybody has like a fucked up head. Like, people's heads. Some people have fucked up heads. Fair. Some people don't have fucked up heads. Just, maybe we just let it happen. <clears throat> I think he just let it happen. If he was born to have its interesting head, it's what makes him special. I don't think we course correct. I think we let it be. And if there's a problem, sure, we address it head on one day. But I'm happy that you didn't mold his head like putty. Like, let it, let his head be his head. He's still cute. He's one of the cutest kids I've ever seen. Like, what's oh, the... Benjamin. Let's see. You're saying it's just the back of the head. It's just the back. Okay. It, it's not going to affect his life too much, I hope. Hey, look, you right now, you could have a fucked up back of the head. I've never even seen the back of your head. Fair. I don't know. Have you seen the back of mine? No. I have, but, a, nice, I have a nice scar. Hmm. From? I had a, a bit of neck surgery. Sort of like cranial, actually like cranial surgery. 2011. I've you, actually never told this story. I think, but you have told me Did this I tell in private. You this story? Share it with the listeners. 2011, I was like fainting out of nowhere for like three months. And it's like, what the fuck is going on? Am I dying? And I went to the doctor and they found out that the base of my spine was connecting to the back of my skull. Mm. They were like just hitting a tiny bit creating spinal fluid, which was forcing me to faint. It's called a Chiari 1 malformation. Ooh. So I went into surgery. They shaved down the base of uh, my skull, and now I'm all good. But left me with some nasty migraines and a gnarly scar. Wow. So you had you, you had brain surgery. I had real surgery. Yeah, brain. Yeah, let's call it that. I had brain surgery. Where did, What hospital in New York? Uh, Columbia. It was like a very Columbia special. Press. It was like a very special doctor for this. It's where the president goes. No big deal. Yeah, it was very special. The president and covered Dan. insurance. Well, I would hope. Yeah, thank God. And what you know? How are your Jewish parents during any kind of medical things? Because my mother at this point has gotten to the age where I can't even like God forbid I had something really wrong. I'm right now four days into an antibiotic. I've been hearing about it, and thank you, Mom, I love you. Uh, let me just describe my mother for you. I gave it about a week of not feeling great. Why? Because antibiotics are too given out. You want to make sure you're really good and sick, that you really need the medicine. The doctor said, it's been long enough, you need something, let's intervene. My mom, for the seven days, did you go to the doctor? <laughs> I said, no, Ma, I'm going to go. I, I, I'm waiting to see. Terrible, <laughs> mom. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go. You make me nervous, ma. I swear to God, I'm gonna go. All right. So you say you're gonna get the kid sick. I go, mom. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm gonna go. Finally, I go to the doctor. I get the medication. She goes, "Who told you to go?" <laughs> <laughs> I go, Ma, I would have gone. Event- I'm a grown man. Like, my body would have given out eventually. I would have seen a doctor. But who said see a doctor? I'm like, yeah, Ma, and if there's a leak, you get a plumber. Like, <laughs> stop it. You didn't invent doctors. She did. She did. She did invent doctors. How are your parents with medical issues? I told my mom three days ago that I had a headache. Every day she's calling me. She says, oh, how are you? I'm like, you know, my, my head hurts a little. Oh. I felt it. <laughs> I knew you. something wasn't right. My mom is like that, though. She'll like, 
And by the way, maybe it's true, so I'm not going to knock it. She does definitely claim that she, like, can feel when I'm not well. Oh, and that she so also enmeshed. can, like, talk to – she's, like, a talk to the dead people type of person. And she, she'll she say, like, I, Ben, I, I have a headache, Mom. I know. I knew. There are so I knew many that, psychologists I knew that, listening right now that are like, this is not healthy. I knew that you had a headache. I could sense it. That's why I called. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I took Advil. And I'm slowly starting to feel better. She's also big on – my, be, my Ben tuition went off. Ben tuition. Yeah. She's big on weather too. Like I called her. I'm like, my, you know, my head is hurting this week. She's like, yeah, well, did you see the weather in California? It was pretty crazy. The pressures, the bad. Blah, blah. So, uh, yeah, she's identical. Identical. Go to the doctor. She's definitely a big pill pusher. Big pill pusher. She would love, similarly, you, you don't feel good? Go to the doctor. Get something immediately. Yes. And I was like that for a long time. Until I realized that the more you take these antibiotics, the less they work. If you take them for too long, they're no longer going to work for you. So I'm with you. I now like to try and let these things run its course. And then in the end, they never run their course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because we've been taking antibiotics since we were babies and our bodies no longer can cure themselves. 100%. It's just a fact. Like we can't, we can no longer be self sufficient humans and just cure ourselves of our ailments we need doctors so we can pretend that yes. we can wait it out for two weeks and then we will end up going to the doctor that we should have gone to two weeks before because we always have ailments us jews 100 percent. it's it, it just it's us there's a it's great us. there's a great um Sarah Silverman joke would you know when you go into a pool or a hot tub and there's that sign that says if you've had diarrhea in the last 14 <laughs> days do not do not go in I haven't but I'm sure it's <laughs> there are signs they they are ubiquitous <laughs> if you've had diarrhea in the last two weeks in the last two weeks everyone has diarrhea in the last two weeks no well, well Sarah Silverman says why doesn't the sign just say no Jews allowed? <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. There's not I there's not one Jew on the planet that hasn't had diarrhea in the last two weeks. It's impossible. Maybe, <sighs> maybe those guys and girls in the Israeli army. They found a way, those ripped IDF soldiers Rugged. to just combat their Jewish DNA. And they are just ripped and like gunslingers and they're amazing. Maybe they don't have diarrhea. Maybe they do. Yes. Maybe that's their crutch. I don't know one Jew that doesn't have diarrhea. Speaking of diarrhea, should we get to our what are you nuts moment of the week? <laughs> yeah, I think what are you nuts is <laughs> our, our stereotyping Jews. <laughs> we're we're going to get flagged. Well, I'm angry at myself for bringing up Jeanette McCurdy once again, but I can't get away from this woman. It's me. I, <laughs> I just keep, I'm going to keep bringing her up because I'm sorry, Jeanette. I recently did a college gig, which I do a fair amount mm, of. Like, yes. you know, I'll do uh, five to ten a year. And and I'm not going to mention the university, but it was a lovely one because I don't want the, them to feel bad. <laughs> it's a fabulous place. Higher education. Love it. What part of the country? It's in northern Michigan. Um <laughs> <laughs> And the the and, and it was a lovely thing, but the woman, um, one of the people who was working the event was like, that was great. Thank you for coming. This was so wonderful. You know, I'll tell you, we originally had Jeanette McCurdy booked. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. But unfortunately, she had to reschedule. I was like, yeah, because she's too famous. You're now. lying. <laughs> yes. You're lying. <laughs> Jeanette is following us. <laughs> this is the curse of Jeanette McCurdy. It's, we, we haven't even seen what's coming. I can't believe it. And listen, I'm happy to be Jeanette's cleanup crew. But I also was like, what are you nuts? Don't tell me that. Like, Josh, I was your second choice. Josh, we're going to die in a hit and run. Jeanette's going to be driving. I don't know when it's going to happen, but that's how it ends for us. We're crossing the street. All of a sudden, done. Dead. I, I could see that. I could see it. That's how this Jeanette McCurdy curse ends. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm chilled from that story. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. What wow, are you nuts? That's a, what are you nuts? Mine is far more like that that is just the what are you nuts of what are you nuts is that is unbelievable i also just can't believe it's back to the hillary episode last week when that guy came up to her range rover and said what do you think of this car i don't like it like yes. why do people have to say things like that why'd she have to tell you that you were 
she passed on somebody else to come to you. What's the point? What does that do for you? Yes. What are you nuts? What are you nuts? Who, who does this? What are you nuts? I mean, I think it was like her nice way of being like, and we're so glad cause that that tonight was so wonderful. Like, who would have thought our second choice would really go above and beyond? But yeah, it's a little what are you nuts? So my what are you nuts uh, is really targeted at an entire group of people, mm. and that would be Californians. Uh, because the Californians are pretending that you guys just have amazing weather, right? That's why you guys love living here. You always say it's perfect, sunny, 70s, just perfect. Every time I come here, the weather is terrible. The last time I was here, if you remember? Torrential. Torrential downpours. This time, what did it do yesterday? Hail. It hailed. I was at lunch. Outside I look, it's hailing. It's hailing. Yes. It's 40 degrees in hail. Why do you live here? What are you, nuts? It's just everybody. Everybody just pretending that L.A., perfect weather, all this stuff. I don't know. I just think, move somewhere else. I don't like it here. And the weather is just not that good. Yeah, you're such a staunch New Yorker. Yeah. Hardcore, hard body karate. Yeah, I am. And so are you, Mets. I love New York and I love I love their logos. But the, the city is inhabitable. So is downtown LA. Long term. No, I'm just saying in general, that level of operating at that level, I'm telling you, it's going to be you and Fran Lebowitz as the two stalwarts who like never leave the city. Like, I feel like you have to go and it's not a knock on the city. It's really a not, it's a knock on living anywhere for your whole life. I think you have to live somewhere else for a while, but like, it's just, it's such a hardcore fast energy extreme energy for your whole life that i totally agree with yes so there needs to be some middle ground maybe that's moving to Boca. long island or westchester or now i like i like the state of new york there's something about the state hmm. or if i was going to leave the state you know i really like a a utah ah like, or mormons like a, yeah the mormons and the jews i feel like we have nothing in common. Yeah. But, lot, well, there's some, we both wear magical underwear. That's uh, Yes. The yeah. seat scene. Yes. Yes, we do. And uh, I like, yeah, I, I like the wilderness. I like having cattle. Sometimes I, just, I think it's just you watch Yellowstone once and you're just like, I got to move to Montana. Oh, yes. But uh, upstate New York seems lovely too. Like it's far more beautiful than people want to give it credit. I don't know how much time you've spent upstate, but it is truly gorgeous. Stunning. Beautiful. Uh, but I don't know. I like the city. Yeah. I like the state. It's, I don't like the state. I, was it you who told me, what was the, it's New Yorkers will, if you have a flat tire, I'm going to butcher this. I think you said it. Did you say this? If, if, I don't think so. Okay. Well, or then I heard it. You have a flat tire. You're in New York. The New Yorker will come up to you, bitch about the fact that they have to help you change this tire and tell you how stupid you are. But they'll change your tire and they'll help you. L.A. people will come up to you, stop by your side and say, oh, my God, I'm so sorry that you have a flat tire. That's so terrible. Take a hike. <laughs> like they'll be so nice and then not help you. New Yorkers are so mean, but they'll help you. I yeah. don't know. I've been talked to in a way in New York that has left me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where I'm just like, you know, you don't have to live this way. <laughs> like I'll leave there going like. It, there's Who? a better way. Who? <laughs> Who was it? I, you know, it, I've heard this. I think it might be. I, I don't know who who talked about this joke, but obviously we love to go at our governors, and and who wouldn't? But uh, whenever people are are knocking Gavin Newsom, the governor of, of California, whether he deserves it or not, and he might, it, it must be. We must remember that California is the fifth largest economy in the world. In the, I think it just passed France. Mm. So it's the fifth largest economy in the world. It's gigantic. It is. It's simultaneously on fire and going underwater. Mm. There's a drought and then we have too much water. It's every political class. It's every socioeconomic class. Orange County is a different country than LA. That's a different country than Central California. That's a different country from SF and, and beyond. It's got a thriving marijuana community. It's it's and there's earthquakes. It's its own country, mm. and that's why no one can govern govern this state because you literally need like presidential 
uh, qualifications to govern it. Yes, it's huge. You're it's 100% a wild right. place. You did just list a laundry list of reasons not to live here. <laughs> Fair. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, there's. I love it here. There's earthquakes. There's. A, <laughs> it's on fire. It's, it's problems. The governor stinks. Nobody can run it. Like, yeah, I'm not living here. That. <sighs> you oh, say sorry. That now. And with that laundry list of problems, highest taxes. Oh, New York's known for its low taxes. No, it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. Well, and it, we also have just terrible people running it. Even though I miss De Blasio, ah, oh, I won't admit this. I mean, I'm admitting it. He was the Batman to my Robin. <laughs> he was my no. He was the Joker to your Batman. The Joker to my Batman. Yes, Thank yes, you. yes. Yes, the jo- yeah Batman to my Robin. Partners in crime. No, crazy. He was the Joker to my Batman, and without Joker, I there's just I miss being able to rip him because he was such a moron. Yeah, and I have no more Bill the Criminal. It's just yeah. Without Joker, you're like hanging out in your back cave, like playing Sudoku. Yeah, like I'll go into Central Park and I'll see the horses, and I have nobody to blame. Yeah, like I can't say like because I don't know like. Eric Adams is not to blame for the horses. He does nothing. He just sits there and parties and... Changes seven times a day. Yeah. No, he doesn't do anything. He owns a lot of custom suits. That's what it seems like. It, it yeah. makes me It makes me a little... We'll oh, see. no. There, no, there's something wrong there. Totally. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. But de Blasio just was a... God. Why don't we start with a couple of news stories? Please. Shall we? OnlyFans is great for people's sex lives. A new study found that watching adult content on OnlyFans can help people explore and learn their sexual preferences among other benefits. Who wrote that? OnlyFans? You could do that with <laughs> porn too. Porn's free. That's brought to you by Pornhub. Yeah, no. <laughs> porn's free. Um, what do you think? This is a Vice News article. What do, what do you... Because... Okay, you go first. <laughs> no, it's... Uh, like the, You were going to say... I feel like my wife is pretty liberal and cool about like, as long as it doesn't get out of hand, she, I think she assumes people hate when we talk about this, <laughs> by the way, I've read Your the mom. comments before. Oh, my mother. And like, I feel like people, well, cause you know, we've got such good toasters and I, I'm not people sure. People hate when we talk about porn. I think that we'll, 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 we'll skirt around, but okay. I think there's an assumption that perhaps I consume some adult content. My wife's, you know, no prude, mm. but I think the only fans of it all feel so intimate because you're literally like, there's literally no pomp and circumstance. Like literally, it's this person who's making like cell phone videos that they're sending in theory to you and they're selling to their thousands of followers that I I know that you would have a real issue with me looking at that. It's funny, I we were out with a couple. I don't even remember who it was, honestly. And the guy mentioned that he watches OnlyFans and his wife had no problem with it. He's like, yeah, I love this girl on OnlyFans. And I'm thinking to myself, that's kind of like cheating. Mm. Like the idea of like regular porn, you don't know this person. You don't know their name typically. Maybe one could know a stage name hypothetically. Yeah. But you don't know this Stormy person. Stormy Daniels. Yeah, you don't, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. yeah. Right. Ashley Adams. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, Jenna Jameson. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Tara Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> These are all like, by the way, like 30, like they were famous in the yeah, early 90s. Old. I remember them from Howard Stern. Yeah, they're old. I swear to God, I remember them from <laughs> Howard Stern. Don't come for me, internet. Okay, but, as you were saying. No, but it's it's just like, there's such a huge difference to me between like funding an individual person's life in exchange for nudes yes. versus just like going on a free porn site. I don't know. That's just me. Maybe that's the old fashioned in me, but... <laughs> I just, I, I think that what that article, unless I misunderstood it, is saying is that watching porn makes you horny. And as a result, you're excited to canoodle more with your significant other. Is that what it was saying? I think it's also like making you hip to the hot new trends, <laughs> new, <laughs> different sort of approaches to canoodling, mm, right? I understand. That- Learning. Yeah, whereas if you're not sort of exposed to that, you would think like maybe there's only one way. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I'm sad we didn't bring this up with Hillary Duff. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Speaking um, of nut milk. <laughs> oh, my God. Marshall cut that out. No. <laughs> 
Well, I think in, in you know, speaking of canoodling, we should we should also talk about Giselle Bunchin wants to try and do better after Tom Brady's split <laughs> because Giselle Bunchin <laughs> Is offering some words of wisdom for when life gets challenging. The 42-year-old supermodel is took to Instagram on Wednesday. She's practicing yoga on a beach. She said, being healthy is more than a clean diet and exercise. It's, a, it's about our attitude to emotions, beliefs, thoughts, and actions. Thoughts? <laughs> do you, what do you want from me? <laughs> How do I respond? Oh, so All right, good. Giselle. I, I'm so happy that this article came across our desk. Because <laughs> if I didn't know that about Giselle, I, I wish her well. She does. She should be better. She should be relaxed. Tom, too. Tom needs to come back to the NFL. Let's make him a freaking Las Vegas Raider. Right? Put him in Vegas. Everybody will come see him. Mm. He'll throw some beautiful touchdowns. Couple, maybe he does a couple plays per game. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love it. One play. One Hail Mary a game. They're sending in Tom until he's 80. How much, how long until Saudi Arabia offers Tom Brady $250 million to be like the, the president of their new football league? It's probably already happening. Probably, huh? Didn't he sign that deal with Fox? Didn't we talk about that? As a broadcaster. As a broadcaster. I wonder if that cuts him out of doing anything with the Saudis. Yes. Right? Damn. Hopefully not. Fingers crossed for the Saudis. Yeah. No. They need a win. They do. No, they do. (laughs) The Saudi Football League. Actually, what would they call it? Because they definitely have a Saudi Football League. SFL. No, with soccer. Oh, right. How does international expansion work when they... Maybe they cut it. Maybe they change the, the silly name of football, which really is the wrong name for our for our for American football. It's it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. Throw Why do ball. you call it football? Dumb. You ne- literally most of the time you're not using your foot. The Almost vast majority. Never. Yes. Run ball. Run ball. It's actually <sighs> such a. It's such a dumb name for soccer because it's so basic. Yes. Like, the name of the game is football. Like, basketball's really dumb, too. I never even thought about it. These are not, like, creative names. Not great. But football, NFL football, terrible name. Makes no sense. It makes no sense. I don't even know what you'd call it. I got nothing. I got nothing either. I'm, you're in the brand space. You're the marketing genius. I, I think it's just got to be. Uh, by the way, I like, oh, no, that still has football in it. What? I was going to say, like, the XFL, Extreme Football League. Like, something about, like, the... The extreme, there's like something, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Because you can't take a throw ball, run ball. Those are all terrible. Throw them out the window. It would need to be like, maybe it's called touchdown. No? Touchdown. Yeah. I'm going to watch a couple touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, No. It's tough. It's tough. I hate it. I hate it too. Well, on that note. Yeah. What an episode. Excellent. A plus. I'm so proud of us. Us too. Me too. Us too? I'm a plural. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, well, if that's how you want to identify, then you are allowed. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm a plural. It's been fun with you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the two of you were fabulous. We've had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my multiple personalities. <laughs> We've had a great time. Feel free to rate and review the pod. Oh, yeah. Check us out on YouTube. On Josh Peck YouTube channel. Yes. Sorry about that, Ben. No, it's good. Get the subs up. Uh, subs up. Yeah. And uh, rate and review. Check us out. Apple Podcasts, Stitcher. Wherever. Wherever podcasts are available. Spotify. Mm-hmm. We I love think you. so. Have you ever listened on Spotify? I try to. Okay. Because I've noticed that m- more people are listening on Spotify. They are. Which makes me feel old that you and I are not consuming Spotify. Maybe no, we're missing something. I'm also, I'm just stubborn. Like whatever my phone comes with, I'm going to use. It Do came you, with a podcast, the Apple Podcast. That's what I'm going to use. Do you have a Be Real? No, no, no. You're no, too no. old. I, I, I just don't understand it. Like, I don't want something that alert. I don't need another alert in my pocket letting me know when to do something. We're too old for Be Real. You heard it here first. But make sure to follow me on Snapchat at Joshua Peck. <laughs> <laughs> We're only too old for Be Real if we don't have like a sponsor. Like if, if a brand wants to sponsor my Be Real, I'll make a Be Real. Yeah. But I don't need a Be Real for personal use. 
I don't even really understand it. It's like oh, it just went off 17 minutes ago. You're be real. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Well, Marshall. now you're not. Well, now you're not being real anymore. What you guys don't know is Marshall. No. Marshall's eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now we're in Marshall's <laughs> I feel good about it. Yeah, it's good. It's good. 